Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh by A. A. Milne. Winnie the Pooh by A. A. Milne. To her, hand in hand we come, Christopher Robin and I, to lay this book in your lap. Say you're surprised? Say you like it? Say it's just what you wanted, because it's yours, because we love you. I'm going to skip over the introduction. Winnie the Pooh. Chapter 1, in which we are introduced to Winnie the Pooh and some bees, and the story begins. Here is Edward Bear coming downstairs now. Bump, bump, bump on the back of his head behind Christopher Robin. It is, as far as he knows, the only way of coming downstairs. But sometimes he feels that there really is another way. If only he could stop bumping for a moment and think of it. And then he feels that perhaps there isn't. Hmm. Anyhow, here he is at the bottom and ready to be introduced to you. Winnie the Pooh. When I first heard his name, I said just as you are going to say, but I thought he was a boy. So did I, said Christopher Robin. Then you can't call him Winnie. I don't. But you said, he's Winnie the Pooh. Don't you know what there means? Ah, yes, now I do, I said quickly. And I hope you do too, because it's all the explanation you are going to get. Sometimes Winnie the Pooh likes a game of some sort when he comes downstairs. And sometimes he likes to sit quietly in front of the fire and listen to a story. This evening. What about a story, said Christopher Robin. What about a story, I said. Could you very sweetly tell Winnie the Pooh one? I suppose I could, I said. What sorts of stories does he like about himself? Because he's that sort of bear. Oh, I see. So could you very sweetly? I'll try, I said. So I tried. Once upon a time, a very long time ago, now about last Friday, Winnie the Pooh lived in a forest all by himself under the name of Sanders. What does under the name mean? asked Christopher Robin. It means he had the name over the door in gold letters and lived under it. Winnie the Pooh wasn't quite sure, said Christopher Robin. Now I am, said a growly voice. Then I will go on, said I. One day, when he was out walking, he came to an open middle place in the middle of the forest, and in the middle of this place was a large oak tree, and from the top of the oak there came a loud buzzing noise. Winnie the Pooh sat down at the front of the tree, put his head between his paws, and he began to think. First of all, he said to himself, that buzzing noise means something. You don't get a buzzing noise like that, just buzzing and buzzing without it meaning something. If there's a buzzing noise, somebody's making a buzzing noise. And the only reason for making a buzzing noise that I know of is because you're a bee. Then he thought another long time and said, And the only reason for being a bee that I know of is making honey. And the only reason for being a bee that I know of is making honey. So he said that twice. And then he got up and said, And the only reason for making honey is so I can eat it. So he began to climb a tree. He climbed and he climbed and he climbed. And as he climbed, he sang a little song to himself. It went like this. Isn't it funny how a bear likes honey? Buzz, buzz, buzz. I wonder why he does. Then he climbed a little further and a little further and then just a little further. By that time, he had thought of another song. It's a very funny thought that if bears were bees, they'd build their nests at the bottom of trees. And that being so, if bees were bears, we shouldn't have climbed to up, climbed up all these stairs. He was getting rather tired by this time, so that is why he sang a complaining song. He was nearly there now, and if he just stood on the branch, crack! Oh, help, said Pooh, as he dropped ten feet on the branch below him. If only I hadn't, he said, as he bounced twenty feet on the next branch. You see what I mean, meant to do, he explained, as he turned head over heels and crashed onto another branch thirty feet below. What I meant to do, of course, it was rather, 
he admitted as he slurred very quickly through the next six branches. It all comes, I suppose. He decided, as he said goodbye to the last branch, spun around three times and flew gracefully into a gorse bush. It all comes of liking honey so much. Oh, help. He crawled out of the gorse bush, brushed the prickles from his nose, and began to think again. And the first person he thought of was Christopher Robin.